Hey, Will Brink here, www.brinkzone.com, and uh, today I want to cover a topic. Been getting a lot of email over, uh, which is regarding the study that came out on omega-3 or fish oil specifically, and a possible link to uh, prostate cancer. And I know you've all uh, probably seen this on the news and read about it, and I've been getting uh, overloaded with emails, of course, asking about this uh, question, so I'm going to cover it briefly. Uh, the study is a basic uh, epidemiological study, a correlational study, where they uh, look at tissue samples or look at you know something people eat or whatever, and then look at diseases and see if the two are associated or correlated. And the bottom line here is that uh, even your basic 101 uh, epi course or uh, biostats course or whatever will tell you that correlation does not equal causation, period, full stop. That's it. So, however, that doesn't mean, of course, that there can't be causation, but the reality is you do not make causation, um, cause and effect relationship decisions from these types of studies. And this, of course, the media doesn't understand, and un unfortunately, people who should know better uh, also tend to ignore that reality. So, realize that. Uh, if you want the full science, you want to get into the full depth of this study, uh, Dr. Lopez uh, has written up a great article for me, which is on the Brink Zone, and I will link it uh, below this video if you want to go look at the in-depth breakdown of the study. Now, the problem with this study, however, is that it's not, you know, I, having said the correlation does not equal causation does not mean you just ignore the study either. Uh, the study had uh, a, a large statistical power, and, you know, it really can't just be thrown out. Uh, sometimes I will look at studies and say, you know, this study is not worth the, the paper it's printed on because of methodological flaws or whatever. I have got to say that this study is not something you can simply just ignore. Uh, it is by far, it is far from smoking gun or whatever as far as there being some sort of connection of, uh, of prostate cancer to uh, fish oil intake, but it is also something that due to the size of the study, uh, and the statistical power and some other issues that Dr. Lopez covers, you really can't just ignore it and throw it out. So let's put it like this. The bulk of the data shows that there is a tremendous amount of benefit to fish oils. And a small amount of data, a limited amount of data suggests, hence the word, there may be an association to prostate cancer. So where does that leave you? Where does that leave you to make decisions? Well, this is where the issue of risk to benefit comes in. And this is a concept that a lot of people just uh, don't really appreciate. Uh, and the media certainly, again, ignores. But for everything you eat, I don't care what it is, there is a risk to benefit. You make a risk to benefit assessment. So let's say there is. Let's say down the line, 10 more studies show there is a, a small uh, uh, associate, direct association, direct causation, uh, possibly of uh, a certain dose of fish oil, uh, perhaps uh, increasing a, a risk of cancer or, or prostate cancer. What do you do now? Well, you have to then look at the risk to benefit. Uh, 20 times more men die of heart disease every year than they do of prostate cancer, uh, which we know fish oil is uh, useful for cardiovascular health. Uh, fish oil is also used for brain metabolism, helps with depression, helps with insulin sensitivity, helps with body fat. There's so much data showing the benefits of fish oil that the r benefit of fish oil far outweighs the risk, uh, the small risk so far that may occur with prostate cancer. And you, this is the way you really have to approach everything you do. You know, you go to the gym, obviously there's a great benefit going to the gym, but you know, you could trip over something on your way into the gym and break your neck. It happens. Uh, I actually knew a guy uh, whose father choked to death under a decline bench in his basement. It happens. Does that mean you shouldn't lift weights? Of course not, because the benefit far outweighs the risk. And therefore, you always have to make a, a risk to benefit uh, assessment here. So again, if you want the full details of the drawbacks to this study and really getting the nitty gritty of the science, I can supply that for you. Uh, go to the Brink Zone or look under here, uh, underneath this video for a link uh, to Dr. Lopez's full article, which will give you the, uh, the weakness of the study and even the strengths, like I say. The mistake of this would be that for people just to completely throw it out and say, uh, it's completely useless. And you know, that's, that's being, not being an objective scientist. You've got to use your objective mind and look at studies like this and say, well, okay, uh, maybe there's something to it, but more study needs to be done to confirm it. And if, if confirmed, well, then what? I'm not going to give up my fish oil because I know that the bulk of the data suggests the benefits far outweigh the risks. And that's the way you need to look at it too. So I hope this helps. I hope it answers your questions uh, about the uh, supposed connection of fish oil to prostate cancer. And if it helps, please, you know, hit the likes. 
uh, and I recommend you subscribe to this channel because you see I give away the objective, uh, uh, unbiased, uh, science-based information, uh, being in the industry for 20 plus years versus the hype, the hoopla, and the bro science. I'll see you all on the Brink Zone.